All right, Kimbo White here. Uh, I'm going to do my UFC on versus six predictions. Uh, Dominic Cruz versus Demetrius Johnson for the Bantamweight title. Uh, I'm going to start at the bottom. And uh, I'm going to take Josh Neer and Mike Easton both from their fights because I think they're throwing a couple of no-name guys to the Wolves. And I might be wrong, but we'll see. we got Josh Neer and Mike Easton both in their fights over... Uh, Keith Wisniewski and Byron Bloodworth. Uh, I'm going to take Shane Roller over TJ Grant. Uh, I just think Roller has the better training camp, has fought the better guys. Uh, and, uh, you know, I feel like TJ Grant's the underdog in this fight, and he, he might prove me wrong as well. Uh, you know, Really, to be real honest with you, uh, Roller's a very, very rounded fighter. Uh, you know, I know his strong points wrestling, but uh, I think that he can not only control, get TJ Grant down and use some good wrestling, but could probably stand with him or, or uh, maybe choke, you know, submit him, choke him out, something along them lines. Uh, all right. Michael Johnson versus Paul Sass. I'm going to go with the wrestler in this one. Michael Johnson's been looking strong, and I think he's a, you know, a dedicated guy. And uh, We haven't seen a lot from him, but he's fast and strong, and he's a damn good wrestler. You know, when it gets Paul Sass, he's a, a good jiu-jitsu guy, but uh, uh, I'm going to go with the wrestler in this one and go with Michael Johnson. Uh, Eve Edwards over Huff. Javiello Oliveira. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with, with Eve Edwards in that fight because, uh, again, a uh, big experience factor. And, uh, you know, Edwards can do just about anything. And if he pulls out some thug jitsu on your ass, you, you're in trouble. So, on the undercard, I got Near Roller, Easton, Johnson, and Edwards. And, uh, Moving on to the main card, we got a rematch between Matt Wyman and Matt Danzig. And uh, <clears throat> a lot of times I'll go with a guy who lost the first fight, thinking that, you know, he'll learn something from it and be able to come back and win, which is what happens a lot. But in this one, I'm going to go with Matt Wyman and say that uh, he'll be able to control Matt Danzig. And uh, I would say probably like some type of. Uh, uh, yeah, either like a second, third round TKO, referee stoppage, or a, or a decision, something along them lines. But I'm definitely going with Wyman. Uh, Johnson versus Brenneman. I've thrown a rest back and forth around a lot in my head. And after the fight with uh, uh, Rich Story, it's real hard to go against Charlie Brenneman. Uh, he's got a lot of heart, and I like him a lot. But I do think I'm going to pick Anthony Johnson in this fight. Because Anthony's looked more dangerous than ever. And to me, he's always had the ability to be a, a top contender. Uh, you know, he was basically one fight from uh, the title when he fought uh, Koscheck and didn't do so well. Koscheck pretty much kicked his ass. And I think he learned a lot from that fight. I'm going to go with Anthony, Anthony Johnson in this fight, but that's a hard pick. And, uh, that fight, could, without a doubt, could be fight of the night and could go either way. Uh, I'm throwing this one around a lot. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, Pat Berry, you know, top level kickboxer, I think it's a little overrated, whatever. Uh, definitely overrated in MMA because he hasn't done anything impressive. As far as evolving into an all-around fighter, I, I see Pat Berry as more hype than anything. Um, but, uh, you know, bottom line is, Steph Mastur has been around MMA a long time. I think, you know, Dennis Stoinich trains with top-level kickboxers just as good as Pat Berry. And uh, uh, Stephen Struve submitted him. Uh, Stephen Struve is pretty wicked when he when he gets a hold of you and wraps the big long arms and legs around you and you have to grapple with him. Uh, so with that said, 
I'm going to go with probably like a, uh, a submission. I don't know what round. I would, I would say first or second round even. Uh, but he might have to wear Barry down a little more than that to hold on to him. I'm not sure. But uh, I think Stephens too. I'm going to go with Stephens too by a submission or a decision. One of the two. Either grind it out and not be able to submit him or, uh, or he's going to submit him probably around the second round. And then uh, in, the, in the in the uh, main event, really throwing this one around a lot too. It seems like Cruz has such a big height advantage and reach advantage, but it's only like two inch reach advantage. Uh, but I think the two inches with Dominic Cruz's boxing ability is uh, two inches he can use quite well. Um, and if Demetrius can't handle Dominic on the feet, then, uh, you know, Dominic Cruz has, has shown, has proved himself as a, as a good wrestler, and uh, obviously as an underrated wrestler, um, and uh, Demetrius Johnson practices pancreation, which not a lot of guys, you don't see that much anymore, back when I started watching cage fighting and you know when the first UFC was around came out and uh, things of that nature there was a lot of pancreation guys and you heard a lot about you know AMC AMC pancreation and uh, now nowadays you know obviously years ago before our time it was uh, an Olympic sport and now you just don't hear much about it but uh, to sum all that up, I'm going to go with Dominic Cruz in the main event by a knockout or TKO, and I think probably by the by the second round. It might happen third round. It might end up going to a decision, but I say second or third round TKO, Dominic Cruz. There's my main card picks, Wyman, Johnson, Struve, and Cruz. So we'll see how I do. I think I'm the first person in the prediction race to get this event up. Uh, so I'm interested to see who everybody else picks and uh, everybody make sure they follow the prediction race and check out everybody else's channel that's involved in it and go check out the standings after every event on my channel G.I. Joe Yo Joe Warren Ben Last Word with Kimbo White